Red Feather Presents from the Archives. Chapter 7 Blight. Statement of Shrub something. Looks like a last name wasn't taken down regarding the depopulation of her hometown. Original interview transcribed 11 years ago, April 5th, 2011. Statement begins. Can you turn the lights up in here? Um, thank you. Yes, that's bright enough. Thank you. I guess I should start at the very start, right. I grew up on a little homestead in Nebraska, just outside a small town. It was all wheat country. We had a couple acres and some chickens and cows for eggs and milk. Plenty to feed ourselves, and we could sell the rest. It was pretty isolated, and we never really made any more profit than what would keep us going, but it was nice. We were happy. It was my dad, my sister, my brother, and me. I was the youngest. I was 15 when everything happened. Our farm wasn't the first one to get hit with the blight. It first started showing up just at the tail end of summer, right when the days started to get shorter and the nights longer. We would hear about it when we went to the farmer's market on weekends to buy and sell, or from the other kids when we went to school, all about people whose plants were getting all... sick. It was a little unseasonably cold that summer, so we put it down to that at first. But a week or so later, my sister found a stalk broken open that was just... pitch black inside. All rotted out. That's when we knew it was something worse. It wasn't like a normal sickness, that was the thing. I mean, we were all farm families. We all knew what mosaic virus and leaf rust and all those look like. Normally, if your field gets sick, it's not hard to identify what it is, and from there you can start working on treating it. But this was different. Even besides the fact it was spring wheat. Normally, it's winter wheat, you have to worry about getting sick. But it happens. The thing that was really strange were the symptoms themselves. It was just black. Like rot, but not really. It didn't smell like rot, and nothing we did that should have worked did. Draining the soil, using fungicides, nothing. It would start at the roots and spread up the inside of the stem and eat its way out. By the time he started seeing spots of black on the outside, the plant was already gone. Had been for months. As the weeks dragged on, we found more and more sick plants, but we still figured it was... manageable, at least. And... There was something else, too. It feels wrong to call it a person. It wasn't a person. I saw it for the first time at the very start of September, about a week before we were due for harvest. It was night time. I don't remember why I was awake. Bad dreams, I think. But I happened to glance out my window, and I saw... something. Standing out in the field. It was so dark out, Not dark like a clear night, like it should have been. Dark like a basement. And it was just... standing out there. Staring. It was human-shaped, but too tall, and it had horns or antlers or something. It was too dark for me to make out details. The outlines of it all sort of melted into the night, and I couldn't even really tell how big it was. The only thing I could really see was its face if you can call it that. Its eyes and its smile. They weren't human features, not at all. The eyes were bright red, no pupils or anything. The mouth was the same. It looked torn, almost, an ugly, ragged sort of thing. But I could still tell what it was meant to be. It was staring at me, and it was smiling. Sorry, could you turn on that lamp too? Uh, thank you. I didn't want to take my eyes off it. I yelled for my dad, but he didn't answer, and neither did either of my siblings. I turned to look up the stairs to see if his light had gone on, just for a second, and when I looked back out the window, it was gone. I don't think I was surprised when, a week later, we found out the harvest was rotten to the core. Almost every stalk of wheat we threshed that fall was black inside, crumbling like ash or mould. It would just fall apart in your hands. 
I can't even imagine what horrible flour you'd get if you tried to process it. We burned it all, pounds and pounds and pounds of it. The smoke blocked out the sun. It made me feel all cold, standing in the shadows. We, we knew then that it was going to be a hard winter. We didn't know how hard. It seemed like it got cold so much faster than usual as winter set in. We were short on bread. Nobody's fields had survived the blight, so any flour we had to buy from out of town, and we hadn't gotten the money coming in from the harvest that we should have. But it still wouldn't have been... It would have been alright like that, if it hadn't gotten any worse. The animals were next. I remember one morning going out to feed the chickens and finding one of them just... dead. Out of nowhere. It was obvious it hadn't been a dog or a fox or anything. I think maybe I thought it was the cold that did it. We figured we'd eat it for dinner, no sense letting good meat go to waste. But when my sister plucked it and cut it open, it was just like the wheat. All black inside and ashy. We had to throw the whole thing out. That night I saw the figure in the fields again. It was closer to the house than the first time. It just stood out there, surrounded by all the broken off and burned stalks of sick wheat, just staring at me. Its smile was even wider that time. It knew. It felt like it knew that I knew it was responsible. It wanted me to know. So I'd be scared. And I was. We lost three more chickens and a cow within the month. All to the same thing. We called the town Betton, but she couldn't make anything of it. She said it was happening to a lot of people's animals. It was like they were all just hollowing out. From the inside out. Like the darkness was just eating them. And the nights just kept getting longer and darker. I honestly don't know if it was my imagination or not, but knowing what I do now, I remember thinking it almost looked like the shadows would swarm around the house at dusk. They looked like puddles around the foundation. I always tried to step around them, even though I knew they were only shadows. Every time I looked at them, I would just see that dead chicken, cut open. Nothing but black rot and bones inside. People started leaving. Or at least, I'd assumed then that they'd left. Now I don't know if they did, or if they... But whenever we went into town, it would be a little emptier. A little more desolate. Whole families would just be gone. People I'd known all my life. Everything started to feel... Dark. And cold. And unwelcoming. Even during the day. They had to close the library because the head librarian got sick, and when they were cleaning up, they found that all the books were falling apart with black rot. It's... December. It all ended in December. It was the longest night of the year, I remember that. The sun was gone before five, and it was so cold. We were all inside, huddled in the living room with the blankets. The furnace was running, but it didn't seem to make any difference at all. And then my dad noticed the spot on the floorboards. It was black, like a stain from a spill. I was looking at it, and I was just remembering about the wheat. How by the time you could see the spots on the outside of the stalk, it meant the whole plant was black inside. My dad told us not to touch it. He went and got a crowbar and pried up the board, and it just... It was like taking the lid off a, a jar of bees or something. The darkness just sort of exploded out like a, a wave or a swarm. It was under the floor, behind all the walls. The whole house was... I just ran. I didn't. My brother told me to run, and I did. The door was open. I just ran, out of the house and into the fields and into the dark. I couldn't see where I was going. It was so dark. And so cold. I could see my breath. I hadn't grabbed my coat or anything. All the broken off stems of the wheat scraped at my legs. When I looked back, I couldn't see any lights from my house or from the town or anything except darkness. I couldn't even see any stars overhead when I looked up. It was just dark. And it was there. It was just standing there in the field, watching and smiling and laughing. That was the first time I heard it. It laughed. It was the worst sound I've ever heard in my life. 
I ran and it didn't follow me. I know I didn't escape. It chose to let me go. I found a road eventually. It must have been miles from my house, but it was something. I followed it until I found a gas station and the people there helped me call the police. They went out to the town in the morning and found nothing. Rotted beams and piles of black ash and and bones. They could only tell where most of the buildings had been from where the basements were dug into the ground. My house was... There wasn't anything left. So far as I know, nobody got away but me. I'm here now because it's as far away as I could get from there. Still not far enough, though. I still see it. That thing with the red smile and the antlers. It follows me. I only see it when it's very, very dark. Maybe it brings the dark. I don't know. I'm sorry, I need to go home. I never want to have to look into American police reports for a follow-up ever again. Midwestern American police reports, too. They're so boring. I didn't even find anything, but Mumbo eventually dug up a report from two years before this statement was given regarding a town, really more of a village, called Empire, Nebraska, which does match in a few details. The report did say the devastation was likely caused by a fire, with no mention of the sort of shadow mold Shrub describes, but from what she said about what was left behind, it does seem like that would be an easy assumption to make. The phone number she left for follow-ups is now out of service, which is somewhat worrying. I called the front desk of the apartment building where she was living when she gave this statement and was able to have a quick chat with her former landlord. Apparently she left in the middle of her lease term a couple years ago and left quite a mess in her apartment, though he couldn't give me any further details besides it needed to be fumigated. From the Archives is a fanfic series written by Johnny Sixteenth Days and Zephaniah Grains, inspired by the Magnus Archives and by Hermitcraft and other Minecraft series. This chapter was performed by Tizzy as Grian. Editing for this episode was done by Campfire and Noctude. Music was composed by Noctude. Thanks for listening!